Hello friends, my name is Ronit Gaikwad and I am going to teach you today about the basic working of the quicksort. So as you can see in the video, quicksort is also known as the partition exchange algorithm and it is an algorithm of the divide and conquer type. That is, here the problem of sorting a set of numbers is divided into sorting of two smaller sets. The example which begins next will help you understand properly the working of quicksort. So as you can see here, we have taken an example with the array. The array contains 10 numbers as you can see in the video. This is the initial array position. Now we start a process of actual sorting using the quicksort algorithm. In the quicksort algorithm here we basically use three pointers used to point or also known as the left pointer, the right pointer and the pivot pointer. As you can read in the video, the left is used to keep track of, keep track of elements greater than the pivot. The right is used to keep track of elements smaller than the pivot and the pivot is used to point to the pivot element itself. So what is the pivot element? The pivot element is the element against which every element in the array is compared while sorting. Here green arrow represents the pivot element, orange represents left pointer and blue represents the right pointer. So as we move next, we start a comparison from the right. Now, as you can see in the video, uh, 7 being less, we swap the positions of 7 and 10 and update the pivot pointer. Next, we move ahead comparing every left element in the array with 10 to find out which element is greater than 10. So we move forward comparing 23, it is greater than 10. So we swap them and update the pivot pointer as shown next. So here it is, we have updated the pivot pointer and swap the locations of 10 and 23. Now we do the same from the right searching for elements less than 10. So I move ahead, 45, 33, 21, 68, 52 and 1. Now as you can see, 1 is smaller than 10. We swap the two numbers and update the pivot pointer. So here it is, we have swapped the positions of 1 and 10 and have updated the pivot pointer as you can see in the video. Now next we move ahead and compare elements from left which are greater than 10. So as you can see, 86 is greater than 10. We again do the same, swap the positions of 86 and 10 and update the pivot pointer. So as you can see here, the positions of 10 and 86 have been swapped and we have updated the pivot pointer. Next, moving ahead, from right, we compare the element with 10 and find which elements are smaller than 10. However, as you can see here, all the three pointers are now pointing at the same location. This is the terminating condition. which means that 10 is now in its perfect place in the array and is in the sorted position. Now we get two subarrays, namely one on the left with two sub elements that is 7 and 1 and one on the right with 7 elements. Now we'll perform the same operation on both the subarrays. First we'll take the subarray on the left which contains two elements namely 7 and 1. So as you can see here, 7 is the pivot element, the orange arrow which points to the left point which is the left pointer is at 7 and right pointer is at 1. We compare 7 and 1, however as you can see 1 is smaller than 7, we swap the positions and update the pivot pointer. Moving ahead, from right we compare the elements greater than 7, however as you can see here, all the three arrows are pointing at the same location, this is the terminating condition, 7 is in its perfect place. Now 7 is in its perfect place and since the remaining subarray contains only one element so both the elements are in the sorted order. Moving ahead we now take the second subarray which contains 7 elements and perform the same operation on this array as well. So as you can see here uh, comparing 23 and 86, 23 is smaller than 86, we swap the positions and update the pivot pointer. So as you can see here we have updated the pivot pointer. Moving ahead we compare the elements from left and find which element is greater than 86, moving the left pointer forward. So 52, 68, 21, 33, 45 and 86. Now as you can see here, all the three arrows are pointing at the same location. So 86 is in perfect place and this is the terminating condition for the subarray. Now we have another subarray which contains the remaining six elements. 
so we again perform the same operation on the sub array so here it is we compare 23 which is the pivot element with the elements on the right and find which element is smaller than 23 so 45 33 21 so here 21 is smaller than 23 we swap those uh, both the elements and update the pivot pointer so here it is we have swapped those and updated the pivot pointer now we compare from left to find which elements are greater than 23 so here it is 52 is greater than 23 we swap both the elements and update the pivot pointer moving ahead we compare those elements which are smaller than 23 moving ahead as you can see how uh, all the three arrows are pointing at the same location this is the terminating condition and we get two sub arrays one with only a single element 21 and another with four elements so since as you can see all three pointers are in the same position 23 is in its perfect position also as 21 is a single element in the array so that is also in the perfect position and is sorted so you just have to sort the remaining four elements in another sub array Continuing the comparison from right in the next survey, we find the element smaller than 68. The first element compared 45 is smaller than 68. We swap their position and update the pivot element. So here it is. We have updated the pivot pointer. Now from the right, we compare those elements which are greater than 68. So 52, 33, 68. However, 68 is in its perfect position, which is the terminating condition since all three arrows are pointing at the same location. Now we continue the same on the remaining three elements which forms one sub array comparing 33 with 45 we swap those elements since 33 is smaller than 45 here it is we have swapped those now moving forward 52 is greater than 45 so we swap those now as you can see here 45 is in its perfect position since all three arrows are pointing at the same location now as you can see the entire array is sorted now as the remaining two sub arrays that we get after 45 have only one single element which means they are also in the sorted position. Now we simply have the task of merging each of the sub arrays to get the final sorted array as shown next. So here's the final sorted array that we get and this is what uh, the array will look like if you have performed the quick sort as shown in the video above. Thus, there are few important points to remember that the pivot element needs to be compared with each and every element and once the pivot element is in perfect position the two uh, the uh, task of uh, comparing and swapping needs to be performed on the other sub arrays as well the two major points to be remembered are while comparing the pivot element from the right search for element less than pivot and while comparing the pivot element from left search for element greater than pivot finally after you get each sub array with only one element, merge all the sub arrays to get the final sorted array. So, this is the conclusion. It is faster than other algorithms such as bubble sort, selection sort, and insertion sort. Quick sort can be used to sort arrays of small size, medium size, or large size. However, the drawback being quick sort is complex and it is massively recursive. Thank you once and all for watching the video. Please do like, share, and subscribe if you have enjoyed watching the video.